In these videos, we're going to talk about summary statistics. These are numbers which summarize some aspect of your data. Though you've hopefully heard of some of them before, this video should serve as a good refresher and perhaps you'll hear about a familiar concept in a new way. In the last lecture and worksheet, we discussed frequency distributions. These can be obtained from counts or by binning your data to make a histogram. Often, we need to summarize distributions succinctly, and there are numerous statistics that we can use to do this. The first and most important aspect of most distributions is their central tendency. This is a single number which represents the, the expected or most typical value in a distribution, and there are numerous ways to measure it. The most common central tendency statistic is the mean. The mean is computed by summing the numerical value of all the data points and dividing by the total number. In mathematical notation, it looks like this. If you've never seen notation like this, or it's been a long time, don't panic. We won't use it that often, but it is a useful thing to understand, especially as you move on to more complicated topics and texts. We assume that our data is a list with n elements, and that list is indexed by the letter i. This subscript notation just means the ith element of the list x. This is the Greek capital letter sigma. It means to sum the thing to the right of it from i equals 1 up to i equals n. X with the line over it, usually pronounced as X bar, is typical notation to denote the mean. In pure Python, the mean can be computed with the simple command mean is equal to sum data divided by len data. The expressions on the left and right are equivalent. If you're reading textbooks, you're much more likely to see stuff that looks like the expression on the left. If you're writing or reading code, you'll see expressions like the one on the right. The mean is a good indicator of the typical value of a data point, as long as there is such a thing as typical. If the data has a distribution like the one shown here, the mean is actually quite high. In fact, it's higher than most of the observations. A nice way to see that is to look at the cumulative histogram. Calculating the value of the mean and looking at where this value intersects the curve, we find that for this distribution, the mean is larger than around 70% of the observed data points. Because of situations like this, the mean can sometimes be a slightly misleading measure of central tendency. The large mean problem arises when we have a number of very large or very small values. In this case, the histogram is said to have fat or heavy tails. This was the case with the salary data from the previous lesson. For this data, the mean was around £35,000, which is a higher salary than around 65% of the ones we saw advertised. If we want to use the mean to indicate what the usual salary is, it is then somewhat counterintuitive to make a statement like, I make an average salary, which puts me in the top third of earners. We will talk about symmetry in another video, but for asymmetric distributions, we often need to use different measures of central tendency. There are other cases where the mean can be misleading. Here's an extreme example. So when a histogram has multiple peaks, it's said to be multimodal. If there are two peaks, as here, it's said to be bimodal. In this case, the mean is in the middle, but it's also a really bad summary of the data. Hardly any of the observations occur close to the mean value. In these cases, other measures of central tendency might be more appropriate than the mean. One example is the mode. The mode is the most likely value to be observed. For integer count data, to calculate the mode, we just take the most frequent observation. In terms of the frequency distribution, the mode is the x value corresponding to the peak. If a distribution has multiple peaks, it has multiple modes. In practice, many distributions have only one peak, so people refer to the mode. Another useful measure of central tendency is the median. This is the number that splits the data set in half. That is, it's the value which is greater than exactly 50% of the observed data points. To calculate the median, we can simply read it off from the cumulative probability distribution, or we can sort the data. In the exercises, you will write code to compute the mean, median, and mode, and compare that to NumPy and SciPy implementations.